My Lords, um, I just want to talk for a moment. I haven't contributed at all in this committee, and uh, um, I, I'm only going to say very few words, and I hope I keep them as simple as possible. Um, I support very much Amendment 69A here, because I think it is particularly relevant, and this, I hope, will be of help to my noble friend, the Minister, who dismissed uh, Amendment 44, which I had my name on last week, uh, out of hand, but I, I hope he will understand that I'm trying to be helpful in supporting this because I think it's terribly important with the legal uncertainty that we seem to have here that the government and indeed ministers protect themselves in some way. The suggestion last week, of course, was that we should have uh, a commission set up for the purposes of looking at these proposals and seeing what effect they might have and uh, moving them into parliamentary scrutiny in the appropriate manner. But now we have a proposal here. This is the uh, subclause 2 of the new clause um, under 69A, which talks that uh, a Minister of the Crown has asked the Law Commission, as it is presently constituted, uh, to report on the effects of this Act on legal certainty. Um, and, of course, it says the clarity and predictability of the law. I'm sure I don't need to remind my noble friend of the importance of having certainty and indeed how important it is uh, in the law to have that. We don't have so many comparisons here. I use the term void for uncertainty in relation to legislation. But certainly, uh, for instance, in the United States, all legislation that is void for vagueness is a term which cannot proceed. Uh, in the European Union, of course, it is quite clear that there has to be clear certainty in the imposition of laws on the people uh, who have to obey them and to follow them. And here we have a situation where we have nothing of the sort, and I think it is important, therefore, that the government finds a way in which it can, if necessary, protect itself. Because otherwise, my lords, we are going to get, and I think... Uh, the noble Baroness Ludford has just referred to it, we're going to get a considerable amount of legal interest uh, uh, in due course. Whether that is through judicial review or whether it is through other means, it is going to be so complex uh, and convoluted that I think that it certainly might please a few lawyers, but other lawyers like myself with a rather more modest disposition would find it quite appalling to see this happening. So may I just ask my uh, noble friend, the Minister, perhaps not to dismiss this amendment um, quite as easily as he dismissed Amendment 44. And in closing, may I just say to him that throughout the proceedings that I have watched so far in committee, there have been many references to the democracy which is necessary that the government wishes to pursue compared with the lack of democracy that the government alleges in the European Union. As a member of the European Parliament, as my noble friend the Minister was too, although for a shorter period, I can tell him that I think that it is very, very difficult to make out a good case for a lack of democracy in the work that was done by myself and my other colleagues from Britain in the European Parliament, and in particular in recent years where the European Parliament has had co-decision and indeed a right to block legislation from the Commission. The proposals of the government at the moment, if they are not put to some form of independent assessment, would leave us with a situation where the secondary legislation that the government is now proposing lacks every single shred of evidence of democracy. And therefore, I would ask my noble friend to seriously consider conceding the Amendment 69A when he comes to respond.